theyeshiva.net. Okay, so I woke up this morning, Baruch Hashem. We don't take anything for granted. And I looked out the window, and I saw what the world looks like this morning. From my window. And I just felt that the right thing to learn today was a mime of the Balatanya on snow. On the Pasek HaNois and Shalek So I went to my copy machine, and I made copies. And uh, this is the mimer in front of you. There's a sefer that's called Sidur Tfilois Mikol Hashana. Sidur Im Dach, Sidur Im Divriya Lekim Chayim. That was written by the Mittler Rebbe, by the son of the Balatanya. My Marim, explanations that he heard from his father, the Balatanya on davening. So uh, one year after his father's passing, the Balatanya passed away, Tovkov Ayin Gimel. 1812, the beginning of 1812, Chavdala Tevez. I'm, I'm sorry, the end of 1812, December 1812. And a year later, Tovkov Ayin Dalad, which was 1813 or 1814, his son and successor, the Mittler Rebbe, published the Siddur, which has, as you could see here, it ha- it'll have two lines of text, as you could see at this page, or sometimes more, sometimes less. And around it are the explanations some of the explanations that he heard over the years from his father on the davening, different maimarim, on the psukim, or the maim, or the statements, the brachas of tefillah, starts all the way with moida'ani, and he goes through, he goes through davening. So this is the maimer of the balatanya on the psukim, in psukim de zimra that deal with snow. Of course, we say it every morning, it's at the end of Tehillim, Kuf Mem Zayin, Kapitel 147, Halalukah, Kitoiv Zamra Lekenu Kinoim Nova Sehila. And like much of Sukkot Zimra, every word is a pearl. Every Pasuk is a priceless pearl. You say it every day, you often uh, don't take note of it. Yeah. But a weather like this, you have to take note of it. Any weather, but especially a weather like this. So what do the, what do the psukim say? David Amalech speaks about the Rebbeinu Shalolam, and he says, "Hanoisin shelek katzamer, kafoyer ka'efer yefazer, mashlech karche chafitim, lufnei karosay miyamayit, yishlach dvare v'yamsem, yashiv rucha yizlamayim," which is basically the forecast of the next few days. Basically. In two in two words, in two verses. You don't have to Google, you don't have to go to your weather apps. You have it in Psukha de Zimra. Hanoisin, he gives shalik snow, katsomer, like fleece, like white wool. The world, the planet, the earth becomes bedecked with white. Katsomer, like like fleece, like white wool. Kfoir, kfoir is frost. A frost, a frost. Ka'efa yefazer. He scatters like ashes. You know, when you hurl ashes, it goes all over the place. He scatters kfur, frost like ashes. Mashlich karchoi, chepitim. Pitim are crumbs. Like pita. You take pas and you crumb, you, uh, you break it up into little pieces. It's called from pas, you have pitim. Because it's many passes, it's many pieces of bread. So pitim and loshen kodesh means crop, crop crumbs. Mashlech karchai, he hurls, he throws, evarft. Karchai, his ice, karach his ice, kepitim like crumbs, just like a person take, kid takes crumbs and throws it all over the place. And the kitchen becomes bedecked with crumbs, or the couch becomes covered with crumbs. He takes his ice and he hurls it like crumbs. The fnei before his cold, who can stand? Who can contain? Who can deal with such a frost, with such cold? Then Yishlach Dvarai. He sends his word. He issues forth his command. V'yamsev. And he melts them. Yashiv Ruchai. He blows the wind. Yizlo Mayim. And the waters start flowing. Because all of the ice now melts into water. 
And the Mizmer continues and concludes, and the connection is difficult to understand. Magid varav liyakov chukav mishpatav liyisrael laasal chen lechalgai mishpatam ayedam alaluk. That he relates his words to Yaakov, to Jacob, his statutes, his laws, his judgments to the Israel, to the Jewish people. He did not do this for any other nation. Such judgments they don't know, Mishpatim, they're not aware of it. Hallelujah, like we end the Mizmorim. Hallelujah, Yudke, praise Hashem. That's the Mizmor. Zagdabalatanya, Hanoisin, Shalakatzamer. Now I just have to say that this first piece is uh, extremely, extremely Kabbalistic. Meaning he's making references to the sources, the way they are in Kabbalah, in Zoyar and in Kisri Arizal. Then he's going to explain. So I'm going to read it through because I don't like to skip, but it's going to be very, very difficult to comprehend because just the language is a completely different language. I'm just going to read it. Later we'll understand it. But now I'm just going to read it just so you should get the full picture. And then he starts explaining so, but quite a few lines of Mamish, uh, what we would call Kabbalah code language. He makes it, the Pasuk says in Daniel, Levushe Kislag Chiver. He had a vision, he describes the Rebbeinu Shalolam. His garment was Kislag Chiver. Slag in Aramaic is Shelag. Shid and the Sof are exchangeable. So, what's in Hebrew, Shelag, in Aramaic, it's Slag. So it's kishelik, kislag chiver, like white snow. Chiver again is white. Sa'aresha, the hair of his head, ka'amar noka, is like clean wool, like white wool, like tzemer. Amar, again, ayin and tzadik, tzemer, amar. Noka means from the word noki, white, clean, pure. White wool, fleece. So Hashem's garment is like white snow. The hair of his head, metaphorically, is like fleece. The beginning of the Pasuk is Atik Yoimin Yasiv, Levushek Islak Chivas Areshek Amenak. Atik Yoimin sits. Now, Atik Yoimin means the ancient one of days. Atik is old, very old. Kosha Atikan. So, Atik Yoimin means the ancient one of days, the old one, the one who's been around, you know, forever. Yasiv, he sits. This is in the vision of Daniel, and his garment is like white snow, his, his hair is like, is like fleece. The term Atik Yoimen, which in case the writings of um, the Mekobolim, and uh, the Balei Machshove, and the Balei Chsidis, uh, Sifri Chsidis, etc., is a very, very common term, Atik Yoimen. Yeah. The source of it is a Pasuk in Daniel, Atik Yoimen Yas. Upirish Atik Yoimen, Yadua Shomiloshin Hamatik Harim. One of the explanations of the word hamatik harim, which means he moves mountains. We have an, you say matik, a matik means somebody who copies and pastes, so to speak, right? He's a matik. He moves it. Matik mi makan la makan. You move. It's movement. So he says, shahu netak mepchines yoimen iloyen shemeslap shepatsim. Atik yoimen means he's re- not his ancient one in days, but here he says he's removed from the days. The days represent. Yoimin Eloyin, which means the higher days. We have our six days, but then there's the six days or seven days. Then there's the higher days, meaning the days, the way they are, everything originates in a higher spiritual realm. The way the Yoimin are in the world of Atzillus, and he is Atik Yoimin, he is removed, aloof from those days. Now I'm going to ask you, if you don't understand the next piece, do not get, uh, you know, do not shut down, because just it's just very difficult stuff. Kihine yodu what's known, the p'chines zayin tachtoines, the atik yoimin, mislapshim, the p'chines adich anpin. I'm just going to translate the words the way they are. There's something called zayin tachtoines, the atik yoimin, which means the seven lower elements of atik yoimin are enclosed in a madrega that is below atik yoimin called arich anpin, which means a long face. Kabbalah is atik yoimin and then there's arich anpin. P'chines chese the atik yoimin, the Chesed of Atik Yom, which is the first one of the Zion Tachtoines, because Zion Tachtoines represent the Midas, the first one, Mislabish Begulgolte, the Arich Anpin, is manifested in what's called the skull of Arich Anpin. You have the brain, and the brain is encompassed by the skull. The skull of Arich Anpin, in that skull, the Chesed of Atik Yom is manifested. And that's what we call the white. 
Obchines gvura da atik yoyim in the second after game, which is gvura meslabish b'moiches tima da arachamp is in, manifested in the inner hidden brain of arachamp below the skull. The skull contains what's called moyach. The moyach itself has many many layers. Something called moiches tima, the inner brain or the secret brain or the concealed brain. Which, by the way, all this which is Kabbalistic language, is manifested biologically in the human skull, in the human brain, because everything is manifested, it's ishtalshalos, it evolves. So just, over here it's in mystical spiritualosis. Aval is gimur is da atik This is all zayin tachtoinus, chesed goes into the skull, gvura goes into the mayach, sasum, to the secret brain. But the first three of atik is completely beyond being manifested. Because in the first three of Atik Yoimen, dwells what's called the level of Malchus of Adam Kadman, which is Malchus of Infinity, and that's not manifested in Arich Ampin at all. Unlike the Zion Tachtonus of Atik Yoimen. are higher than those. Are higher than Zion Tachtonus, right, yeah. In Idra Rabba, which is a section of the Zohar, a very, very intense section of the Zohar explains, when he speaks about Hashem's garment being white snow, this Levush is also called Yud Gimel Tikun Edikna, literally means the 13 strands of the beard, Dikna is a beard, Tikunim are different aspects, Yud Gimel, Tikkun, the 13 strands of the beard, which are connected to Yud Gimel, Midois Harachem, which according to the Zohar, the beard has within it, all aspects of the beard have within it 13 aspects, 13 angles, or 13 dimensions, they could be split up into all the parts where the beard grows on the on the person's face, and they correspond to what's called Yud Gimel, Tikkun, or Yud Gimel, Midois. So that's what he says, that's the Levushe Kislag Chiver. He says, this levush is the yud gimel. Well, the chayre yipole is a hapidosh, which is very strange. Meyach and the mefarish levush should be yud gimel to tukun edikna. Since he says that this levush is yud gimel to tukun edikna, she shor shom nak b'pchines moiches timod arich hampen. And the source of the yud gimel to tukun edikna is the secret brain of arich hampen. But a mevur v'yadua by itzchayim b'chama duchti. That Rizal says many places in itzchayim she pchines chesed da atik yoyman mislabish begulgal to da arich hampen she pchines chesed. I warned you, I warned you. Huh? <laughs> now, this is just the Hagdal. It'll become clear. It's just this is classic Kabbalistic language. This is classic Kabbalistic language, which is very, very abstract. Because it's all code. It's 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 code language. But what the point, the, the question he's raising as an introduction to the Maimir is that we know Chazal tells us, the Mishnah tells us in the Goyim that there were different types of uh, leprosies, right? This is called Baharis. Baharis is Azaka Shelik. How did you identify it? It's strong white like snow. Then you have something called Se'es. Se'es, you have Baharis, and Se'es is Kitsemer Lovon. Like uh, like fleece, like white wool, and the shelleg is considered more white. And then after that, you have tzemer, and then after that, you have sid hahechel, the plaster that they used, the hechel plaster, which is a lighter, not such an intense, not such a sharp form of white. So shelleg is considered the strongest of white, even more than tzemer. The more something is white, the more it represents chesed. Daniel says his garment is kislag chiver. His garment is like white snow. His seyar, his sa'ar, 
is kamar noka, is like white fleece. What the Balatanya is asking is l'cha'ira, the sar reisha, as we see in the Sifri Kabbalah, represents more chesed, represents something much deeper even than the levush. Nonetheless, the levush is compared to snow in the Neil, and the here is compared to, to wool. Because based on the Zohar, we see that the levush, which is called Yud Gimel Tikkun Dikna, comes from a, a lower p'china, so to speak, a lower p'china than Sa'ar Reisha. As he puts it, it comes it's connected to Moichus Tima of Arich Anpin. And Atik Yoimin, as he said before, the chesed of Atik Yoimin goes into the skull of Arich Anpin, which is called Keser of Keser, beyond the Moich of Arich Anpin, which is Chachmash of a Keser. Generally, the skull is connected to Keser. The brain is connected to Chachma. In the skull itself, you have Keser Shabekeser, that's the skull, and then the Mayach of the skull, which is Chachma Shabekeser. That's already a lower Pchina. So Sa'ar Reisha, the Galgalta, the here, which is on top of the skull, is higher than the Cyrus, the Dikna, the beard, which is a lower level. And yet we say that the Levush is like white snow, and Sa'ar Reisha is Ersht, Kamar Naka. When it's Lechorah, the other way around. The Saras, the Dikna, are lower than Sa'ar which is connected to the skull, which is much higher than Dikna. That's the, that's the question. Let's, uh, let's, let's see, start the beer here. Achine ha'inyin yuvan be'hekdem. Three lines on the bottom. Achine ha'inyin yuvan be'hekdem. Pidush inyin shelig maho. The whole inyin could be understood. We first have to explain what is the The whole inyin could be understood. We first have to explain what is the concept of snow. He makes if the Pasik says this is Yecheskel. Yecheskel has a famous vision known as Maisim Merkava. We read it on Shvuas, right? The Maisim Merkava was the vision of Yecheskel Hanavi, the vision of the chariot. He has there, he says, he makes if in Yecheskel Perik Aleph, I think Pasik of Beis, he says, Al Rashi Hachayas, I saw on the heads of the Chayas. Chayas literally means the living ones, the animals, which are referring here to the malachim, the angels, which he calls chayas hakodesh, like we say in davening, chayas v'fanim v'chayas hakodesh, the holy chayas, the holy living animals, so to speak. We'll soon see why they're called chayas, and why we call chayas animals. They're talking here about the angels, holy angels. But he says, I saw on top of their heads, rakia, a heaven, a firmament, ke'ein hakerech hanoira. It looked like awesome ice. It looked like fearful noiras, like awesome ice. On top of the on top of the heads of the malach, so he's referring to this kerach, what looked like ice on top of their heads. For this, let's analyze the difference between snow and ice. One of those things when you're four years old, you ask your father, "What's the difference between snow and ice?" Both obviously are formed from water. It's both water, but there's a huge difference between what we would call shalak and what we call kerach. What's the difference between the two? The hine etzem hashalak. The next page, samach gimel amid base. Etzem hashalak. Snow hudak ma'oid ma'oid. It's thin. It's subtle. It's thin. Va'atzmoi v'tivoi humayim mamish. Its core and its its chemistry is water. It's the ice crystals that are formed of water. It's not water in its pure liquid form. That's not what shellac is. Rather, ice crystals have been formed from the water. It's been a little congealed. It became a little niglad. It formed into smaller, what we call today, crystals of ice, smaller particles, so to speak, of ice. This is based on the cold temperature. You need a certain amount of freezing point, a cold temperature, in order, up there in the atmosphere, in order to be able to turn the water into ice crystals, and then heavy enough to be able to have enough pressure, and to come down and to descend as what we call snowflakes. V'amnam giludoi kolosh v'chalosh. But the gilud, gilud is the the ice component of it, it being congealed, water molecules coming together, sticking together and forming into an ice, 
is kolosh. It's thin and kolosh. It's it's weak. Volcano dakmaid, which is why snowflakes are extremely extremely thin. It's not a inbre- unbreachable tough piece of ice. Because the reason it was congealed was because you reached a certain temperature where it turns into ice crystals, but it's ma'atkar. Relatively, it's not so cold. And that's why with a little bit of a change of air, change of temperature, when there's a little warmth, it's very easy for it to melt and revert back into the liquid form of water. For example, when the snowflake lands on the, on the ground, on the earth, or you take the snowflake, you put it into a vessel, and there's a little warm temperature, it will melt easily back into water. When it comes to ice, ice also comes from water. It's also formed from water. But it's... The gilud... The congealing, the water becoming ice, is dense and thick, very dense. You can have ice that is so thick, its thickness is many amois. If an amois is around a foot and a half or two feet. So you're dealing here, you never have a snowflake like that. You have a tiny little snowflake. Sometimes many snowflakes gather together on the ground, so you have a a nice beautiful snow, and you could have the snowball fights and build snowmen and shovel and have fun. But uh, with Kerach, you'll have Kerach that pushes, it's a piece of ice that, that's, that's very, very thick. The Gambe Kerach Dak Ke'etzpa. And sometimes even Kerach that's Dak, like a finger, it's as thick of a, as a finger. The sheet of ice is not so thick. Masa covered Lavrilov Ba'agola. It can contain a very heavy burden. For example, you could pass over it with a wagon. It becomes as, as thick, as hard as, as iron. And as you knew very well, in the weathers in Russia, that the uh, rivers, rivers freeze, and right, people would, would walk on it. And people would literally take wagons. This is not uh, some hypothetical example. They would be able to cross the various rivers and with heavy, heavy burdens, heavy, not only walking, but taking heavy wagons and animals over it and packages over it and so forth. And it became like the road. And the reason it became like the road is because the Mayim turned into Kerach. Even if it's that Gilud. This is all because of the intensity of the congealing into ice. Kiniskaru ha Mayim Mo'id. The difference is that here the water became extremely affected by very cold weather. Because of a tremendously cold temperature, so the liquid form is concealed and it becomes congealed, it becomes fakvetched, meaning the molecules turn into a solid piece of Blo- of like a block, a solid piece of block of, 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 of ice. It becomes a geshem here doesn't mean rain, it means material, physical. It becomes a geshem that's thick and heavy. Because the molecules became so fakvet and so tight with each other, now you have a mamish, a solid piece of what would seem like impenetrable ice. Mavur Bezoya the Zoya says, the Ruach in Aglid Maya. You want to see this? Go to the north. You go to the the North Pole, and you'll see over there. You'll see over there what ice is. It's not just Dak Ketzpa, not just Kama Amos, but you have mountains, mountains of, of what they call icebergs. So the Zoya says, Ruach Tzofa, in the wind of the north, Aglid Maya, it congeals, turns the water into ice, Liyoser Ruach Karbe Yoser, because of the temperature. It's extremely cold. Ruach Daraim. On the north and uh, the south, this is on the north. Ruach Darnam on the south, Ishtari Maya melts the water. Ki Ruach Ham because it's a Ruach Ham. It's a warmer, a warmer wind. Hanim shall me call ze yuvan lamaski lamayla bebchines shelig ha'elyon. This is all like everything in the world. It's a marshal. 
So this is the way it's manifested in the physical world. But there's something called Shelig Ha'elya. What's Shelig Ha'elya? When it snows down here, it's not because there was a weather change down here on earth, in this area, in the tri-state area, and Bemela, the meteorologist, will tell you this is what's going to happen, it's going to snow, it's going to snow 7 inches, 8 inches, what is it, 8 inches today, 9 inches, and so forth. That's the lowest layer of action. It starts snowing in what's called Shelig Ha'elya. There's a higher snow that comes down. The physical snow is a manifestation of a spiritual snow. Because that's what it really is. It's a marshal that contains within it a nimshal. It's the physical manifestation of a certain energy. Just like you'll have a person who'll look outside and tell you it's snowing outside. They're saying the truth. It is snowing outside. Then there'll be the weatherman who will explain to you how long it's going to snow and when it's going to stop and how many inches it's going to be. Whether they're right or wrong, but sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. But even they're right. So they're explaining to you already not only what's happening, but where it's happening and how it's happening and when it's happening and when it's going to stop, etc. Then you'll have the meteorologist who will explain to you, if you have the patience and the mental space, what is going on to understand why it's snowing today. Why didn't it snow yesterday? Why is it not snowing tomorrow? Why is it not going to snow tomorrow? So he's already going into a deeper layer, to explain to you the science behind snow. And then you can have somebody who can explain to you even deeper, what's the reason for that itself? Why is the weather, the temperature reaching this state, and resulting in that? And then you can go deeper. Now who's saying the truth? Everybody's saying the truth, they're just grasping a different layer of the reality. Then there is the mystic discussing the weather. The mystic, the spiritual mystic, right? And what is he saying? He's also talking about the same facts, but he'll already introduce what's called Shelig Ha'elyeh. Shelig Ha'elyeh means the higher snow. Shelig means the snow the way it is above. What do we mean the snow the way it is above? Not just above in the clouds. That's the first level of above. But above in the spiritual clouds. So he says, do what's known, Generally, wisdom, Chachma, is called water. Omar is Rosh Tevis, Er, Mayim, Rakia. The Zoyer explains, and he's not elaborating here on the details, but it'll be relevant later. There's something called Er, which is light, which represents Keser. Mayim, which is water, which represents Chachma. And Rakia, which represents Bina. Er, Mayim, Rakia. And everything in the world develops in these three stages. Light, Mayim and Rakia, even physically, light is physical, but it's the most intangible physical reality. And that's why the realities of light still stagger the imagination. The speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. And the nature of light is extremely paradoxical and incomprehensible. Ad Hayoyim, we're not sure if lights are particles or waves. They act like particles, they act like waves. Today they say they're both particles and waves. They're very, very, it's, it's so intangible that it's very hard to measure, and different measurements give different results because the observer affects the nature of the light. Then there's Mayim, which is already much more tangible and concrete, but it's still in fluid form. And then there's Rakia, like we learned, Ke'en HaKere Chanoir, which represents the congealing, the Mayim becomes congealed into a mold, into a form. So Mayim, the Zoya says, is represents by Chachma. There's something deeper than Chachma called Ur. Then there's Chachma where the wisdom is more in a fluid state. And then there's Bina where it becomes more concretized and developed. Like the sperm is called Chachma. And then the woman is Bina and she takes it and turns it into a, 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 a fixed, a fixed uh, form of a fetus which is fully developed. And once it's in that state, this is how it is. So therefore, Mayim generally represents Chachma. The Gemara says, Babakama ain't Mayim al we speak about wisdom being a source of, 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 of water, of, of irrigation, of inspiration, of enlightenment. That's all the concept of Chachma being the Inyan of Mayim. When Chachma goes through a Tzimtzum, which means a restriction, 
tzimtzum from the word litzamtzem, right? Means to restrict. And the light becomes restricted and concealed, then the water is morphed into snow. That's the dimyon of shalik. That the water becomes niglat. It becomes more congealed. Venis alem, as we said before, the natural liquid form becomes concealed as it develops into these snowflakes. The inyan hat simtsum, what simtsum are we talking about here? Yuvan aldeda, aldedech dimyan hat talmud hayoshu lifnei rabbi. Lilmer de lohavin eze shefa seichel mi rabbi. When you have a Talmud, a student, and he's sitting in front of his Rebbe, he wants to learn, and he wants to understand a Shefa Seichel. Shefa Seichel means a flow of ideas, a Shefa, a new flow of Seichel, of intellect, of truth, of awareness from his Rebbe. Sha'oz, kishashoya lino dvar chachma, if in the middle of that process, somebody comes to the student and asks him a question in something of chachma, an intelligent issue, even though he has an answer, it's not that he's ignorant. He has a lot to say about this. He will not be able to answer. Why? When he's sitting in front of his teacher and he wants to receive what's necessary at that time if he's a real Talmud, is a bitl batzmuse. Bitl batzmuse means that his eye is completely focused on receiving. His very essence, his very presence is not in an assertive mode, but it's in a, it becomes like a receptacle in order to receive. At that moment, he can't be a giver to others. He can't be a teacher. Ki, it's interesting, us at that time. And he brings here a concept from Yeridea, from Ilchis Taruvas. Ki, aidi de tarid le mivla loipolit. When you're busy absorbing, you can't emit. So over there it's talking about a piece of meat absorbing, absorbing from another piece of meat, loipolit, and emitting blood. The concept in physicality, though, is a concept on all levels of reality. I did the tarid lemivla loipolit. When you're really consumed by absorbing, you're not in a state of polit, of emitting, of spitting out. Lemivla is a makabal. Polit is a mashpia. So when the Talmud may be in a different zone, now he could be a Rebbe, he could be a teacher. But when he's sitting in front of his Rebbe, any real teacher and any real Talmud, we're not talking about the Talmud is sitting, you know, he's not interested, the Rebbe's not interested, the Talmud's not interested, he's texting and he's thinking about something else. We're talking here a Talmud and a Rebbe in the most ideal and genuine form. So the Talmud has to know that any disturbance even a positive one, even him giving over what the Rebbe is teaching. Somebody says, what is he saying? At that moment, what's necessary is he is completely, completely focused and tuned in to receive. There's no I present here to communicate, to give, to to develop, to form in any possible fashion. What's necessary is complete openness, what he calls bitl batzmusay. My very core is not present in an assertive way. It's just open, it wants to receive. It's called bitl batzmusay. In his atzmayus, in his core, he's completely open. He's like an open, empty vessel, a space, allowing something new to come in. I did it hard Ki hazois if he wants to receive something in his core, his core has to be in a state of openness. If you want to receive it superficially, yeah, fine. You're busy, but if, if you're really going to get it, you got to be there, and you have to be there fully. There's no I that could be anywhere else. Even analyzing, the moment you become a mashpia, you're not a mechavel anymore. A mashpia means I'm giving it over. What does it mean I'm giving it over? Even in my mind I may be giving I'm giving it over to myself. I'm teaching it to myself, I'm explaining it, I'm developing it, I'm getting excited about it. That's all states that are important, but they're completely different states that come afterwards. To absorb it in this atzmos, there has to be complete bitl batzmos. The difference is, hashpa represents his pashtus. Kabbalah represents tzimtzum. It's two completely opposite trends in the human soul. Kabbalah means I basically shrink and there's almost nothing here. 
Yeah, I contract. I contract. Yeah, so I could I, I create an empty space, an empty vessel. I contract. I'm not in a place of, of expansiveness, of, of expression, of, of actualization. But the, as we say in Yiddish, but the Gansi is spashtos. On the contrary, I'm like a little nakuda, a little nakuda, like the Yud. Why? Because that's where I want to be. I want to be in a place where my eye is actually not expansive. I want to receive. I want to create an opening within me to something beyond me, something larger, something deeper, so I could be macabre. Then there's the opposite, which is his pashtus. His pashtus lamata is the exact opposite of tzimtzum. V'hainu aidi de tarid lemivla u lekabu v'chines bittel al kein le polit la shpia le shayle dover. Since the Talmud, the student, is completely in a mode of absorbing, and what does absorbing mean? Bittel. That the I, the ego, the, even the intellectual ego, the spiritual ego, is not present. So therefore, loy polit. He can't admit to become a mashpia, which is a state of espashtus. Now I'm expanding, I'm giving, I'm communicating. Hashpa can only come if there is if there is self-assertion. It's been doing it speaks when we had the Mayim of Yadat Ayom. The teacher was teaching and being expansive, but the tool he was using was actually tzimtzum. Yes. Yeah. That was a different type of tzimtzum. There's the tzimtzum of the teacher... <laughs> The information has to be mitzamtzum. Here the tzimtzum is in the gavra. <laughs> the teacher is mitzamtzum the chefza, and he's mitzamtzum the gavra. But the teacher himself has to be in a state of his pashtos. There's a flow, I'm giving. So in, if you dissect it, there's really two components here. Ha'alef, number one, ha'tzimtzum v'abitl v'atzmusay. V'habeiz, heder is pashtus ilamat. It doesn't begin that he's not mispasha to others. It first begins internally that in his atzmus, in his core, he's in a state of tzimtzum. And in a state of bitl. In a state of some form of, of, of nullification, of, of complete, complete contraction. And the second thing is, therefore he's not expanding and flowing downward. V'omna move on. Sha'in headed is Pashtusa Lamata, Mitzat Pchinis had Simtsum Hamiti, Shubimenias Rotsen Hamashpia, Elerak Mitzat Habitl Vakivutz Ashebat Smusa Le Kabul Kanal Vadal. His, his lack of giving, of answering, is not because of what he calls here at Simtsum Hamiti that he doesn't want to give. That I'm not interested in the relationship. That's not what's happening. The Pshat is, at this moment, there's nobody to give. At this moment, he's, he's a Talmud. He's receiving. Dugma is a Yuval Lamaila, Bibchinis, Chef, Bibchinis, Tsimtsum, Chef Hachachma. The example for this is when you speak about Mayim, which is Chachma, and the Chef becomes restricted, like the Mayim becomes literally contracted, that's what happens. When the water is in a fluid form, it flows. The Gemara says, "Ma mayim yoridim makam gavayil makam namach." Right? Water in a fluid form is going to flow everywhere, and it's going to reach the lowest place. If the water sees, so to speak, that there's a place that could still descend, it will descend there until it can't go anymore. That's the mayim. When the water, so to speak, becomes contracted, somewhat congealed, it forms into ice crystals and then comes down here and we call it ice flakes. This is the symptom of the Mayan. The water molecules come together. They stick together. And when they stick together, now what you have is an ice crystal. You have a concept of ice here, the beginning of it. So he says, I know b'chines helem v'kivuz shabatzmus ha'chachma. In the Mayan, there is now a helem. The kivutz, there is a sense of kivutzes when it becomes uh, um, uh, con- yeah, kivutzes uh, uh, gathered, concentrated, concentrated more, ah, contracted. Huh? contracted, yeah, contracted. Shabbat lamata, and that's why it will not just extend below lamata, like in the nimshal to the student, to the person asking the question. 
because the water itself, the Chachm itself, is in a state of bitl, in a state of, where it becomes a receptacle, legabe atzmos hamatzah, to the essence, to the atzmos, to the etzim of the matzah, the one who emanates the Chachm, shemisham nechzav mekaira, from where its source was chiseled out, was honed out, as the Pasuk says in Mishle, literally, Shleim HaMelech says, where are you going to find Chachma? Chachma, me'ayin, from where are you going to, you, it's not like something you find in the, you're walking in the street and you find a pen, you find a diamond, you find a wire, you find a metziah, he says, a Chachma, you're not going to find Chachma in the street, it's precious. He's teaching here deeper, not only as a question, but like he says often, Chachma comes from a source, that source, huh? Right, yeah. Here. The nature of Mayim is that it wants to descend and it will go down to the lowest place. Mayim is not something that inherently says, I don't want to give. On the contrary, it's not a solid, it's a liquid. A liquid will flow down to the lowest place. Like the Gemara Takas says, why Torah is Mayim, that it's Torah is Bemakim Namuch, it's those who are humble and want to give, etc. But there's an element of koir. What does the koir represent? So when somebody is cold, you know, they, they, they also congeal and contract. They want to like, uh, contain that body heat. They're not in a state of, of rachvus and espashtus. You're trembling cold. So he says, as it becomes cold, it becomes congealed, which represents the bittle of the Mayim to its source from where it comes. The bittle of the Chachma to the Ayin, which causes a form of kivutz, of contraction rather than expansion. V'inyin haglad, what do we mean by this congealing? Hainupchines heder haispashtos. That the water is not expanding outward. On the contrary, it's coming together. It's becoming more, more sticky. It's staying together. It's not being expanded. Built to Yardum Snowflakes will not start descending everywhere. They will remain in one spot. They will not just flow, flow, flow. Now in physicality, what's the reason? Why is the water not flowing? The answer is because it's not anymore in a liquid form. There was a kivutz, it was contracted. Because, as we said, the cold temperature did this. So that's what it is physicality, physically. What is it spiritually? That there's something that causes the mehachachma to contract to be in a state of tzimtzum and bitl, and it's not in a place of flow. So what's it's the position of flow? represent mystically? What is the core represent? Let's see. What is, the, what, what is the reason? What is the core? Yeah, good. Um, is there, you, and from this we can understand. It's a fascinating idea. From this we can understand something else. Noivlois is an expression in Medrash. Noivlois Chachma means, like, um, no, not, not gathering. Uh, Noivlois is that which is uh, uh, the residues, that which is left over. Huh? Grapes the fool that we saw. Right, yeah, yeah. Like Noivlois, the residue, like after you harvest, uh, the, the reap the grapes, and this, Noivlois is what's left over. Like the residue that's left over. And noivel, it, it, it falls off, it comes down afterwards. Va'alehu loy yibayl, right? It says in, in Tehillim, va'alehu loy yibayl, or, or Yisra says, novel tibal. So what does he mean over there? When you leave fruits on this tree after they become ripe, so they novel, they, uh, they wither away. So it represents that which remains afterwards, and it falls off. So he says, From the vine, from the vine wisdom, from what's, so to speak, what, what comes down, what falls down afterwards. You have numerous, he says, it doesn't mean a few, it means you have so many different types of chachma in the world. In our world, we have a tremendous chachma that relates to understanding the physical world. And his first example, fascinatingly, is biology and anatomy. One of the greatest chachmas is 
Nituach we mean, today we call a surgery, but the word Nituach means, means the anatomy, the split, the, the structure, the structure. Like Venitach Eisel in the Sacha by Karbonel says, you cut it into pieces, so what it means is understanding the Nituach, the Mahalach, dissecting the details of Avrei Adam, the entire organism of a person. Ba'ifen Mahalacham, Sheichach Magdayla. It's a Meir Dekechachma to understand us. Beginning with the brain, all the way down, the entire guf, the whole mahalach. First of all, the chemistry of every aver and the interaction of all of them. The entire guf for Adam, the aver of Adam, basically the chachma of anatomy, the chachma sanituach, to be able to for to take a anituach, a surgery, is a chachma gedol. And as we know, even the greatest chachamim in this, right, the greatest doctors, what makes them so great is that they'll tell you right away, we know so little, like Dr. Mishal. First thing he'll tell you, we know so little, right? And the greater ones, huh? <laughs> he says, by him it's MS. Okay, you're a good doctor. <laughs> you're a good doctor. The moment our doctor tells you, we know, we know, we know everything today. <laughs> the Marsha says, that's Pratoiv Shabiroi from Legehenim. Behaltzach Atoiv, in Mesech the Kedushin, Behaltzach Atoiv, you got to be careful. It also comes with other pshat. Toiv is begematria yud zayin. He takes out the 18th bracha of Rafa'enu Hashem v'nei Rafa'e because he doesn't need Rafa'enu Hashem. It's the same idea. The arrogance is the prerequisite of mistakes. So the Chachm is so deep because it's really, it's, really, it's, it's, God, it's God's organism. <laughs> Biology is basically, it's, 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 it's Chachm that comes from a lakus. He says, Chachm g'dayla. Vihi yorda milmaila. This came down from above. Me ayin liyesh. Mepchines chachma. Shebe malchus da asiyah. Shebe soicha malubash chachma. Shebe malchus da atzilus. Shebe malubash chachma da ir abba. Shebe kabu mepchines chachma stima da arachampen. Kama shekosa va chachma yayin timotse. When you look at this chachma down here, you could go like, wow. Just, he's talking one, one example. He's not even talking about Chachmas Atchuna. For example, astronomy, cosmology. He's talking one element. He's not even talking about animal. He's talking about the anatomy of people. It's a Gewaldik Chachma. But this Chachma is called Neuvelis. <laughs> it's the residue. It's what came down after, at the end, as he puts it. This Chachma came down, it's called Me'ayin Liyash. The source of it is called Ayin. This Chachma comes from a place called Malchus of Asiyah. There's four worlds, Atzil, Bri, Yitzir, Asiyah. Each world is made up of ten characteristics, ten founding blo- ten uh, building blocks. The last one is Malchus. The last world is Asiyah. So this is the Chachma that comes, and each one of the ten includes the other ten. So you'll have Chachma, Shabbat Chachma, Chachma, Shabbat Bina, like we have in Sphere Simon, right? Chesed, Shabbat Chesed, Chesed, Tugura, Chesed, Shabbat Malchus. So he says, from Chachma and Malchus of Asiyah came this Chachma. In that Chachma you have... The Chachma of Malchus of Yitzira and the Chachma of Malchus of Bria and the Chachma of Malchus of Atzilus. In the Chachma of Malchus of Atzilus, you have the Ur Abba, the Chachma of Atzilus, which comes from Chachma Stima Arichampin, which is Keser. So this Chachma Sanituach in the rung of spiritual evolution is on the bottom, in the physical world. This is brilliant. This is a brilliant analysis. For this Chachma to be developed the way it applies in physical terms, there had to be a tremendous Tzimtzum, a tremendous restriction and contraction of the original Chachma. The Chachma becomes so concealed and restricted and contracted. That from the Chachma of Moichus Timad Arachampin, ultimately, after endless evolutions and incarnations, there could be a Chachma that relates to the physical structure of the, of the Guf. So when, we, we, when you're looking at the brilliance of biology or anatomy, you're looking at an evo- something on the lowest rung of Chachma, the way the Chachma translates into material beings and relates to them. Pitim, like the brekalach. The brekalach, yeah. We're not going to use yet the word brekalach because that's, that's, that's for karcha. 
but but <laughs> but that concept that doesn't mean it's not a moira de kechachma. It's a moira de kechachma. But the whole chachma is the last rung of ishtalshalos because that chachma itself you have the way it's in a higher plane and a higher plane and a higher plane, and yet deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until it bechal can't relate to the physical. But the way the Chachma comes down in this world is there becomes a whole study and a person could spend a lifetime and two lifetimes and as we know today, many, many, many lifetimes just studying the few inches of the brain which has a hundred billion neurons in it. Figure that out. And the hundred billion neurons are interacting with each other. (laughs) Imagine we would be able to see right now a map of the United States of America and see every telephone line crisscrossing every home in the United States of America, from east to west, from north to south, the whole America. Imagine you would be able to see every telephone line in every single home and actually see the wires connected, right? And this pales in comparison to what's happening in your brain. What's happening in your brain. And I'm not being dramatic and exaggerating here. Supposed to see is that way, so just 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 that itself, and just the, that's just the brain. Now you got to figure out the interaction of the brain with every other part of the body. So it's it's a it's half of a fella, but he says this is all yesh mayayin. What says yesh mayayin? That there's an a chachmu that it comes from that we call ayin. Ayin means it's so intangible, it's so beyond it. It's called ayin. It's called nothing, not because it's nothing. It's the source. So this is the the noivlis chachma. How did this get explained here? This is all the Mayim going through this symptom. That's what he says. <speaking in Hebrew> That's what he says. <speaking in Hebrew> this is like the shelig melting back into water. So you have water. The water forms into snow, and then the snow melts back into water after it went through Shinei Amohus, which is a metamorphosis. So now the Chachm is a new type of Chachm, it's a Chachm Gashmas. So you have the water in its original source, Chachm Elikis. Then the Chachm contracts, the Chachm congeals because of coldness. We'll soon see what the coldness is. The coldness creates a new element where there's a tremendous symptom and a tremendous bitl. Like the Talmud, who goes through that state of contractions in order to absorb something new. How does, how does that analogy of the Talmud and the Rebbe help us? I, I just find it makes it more confusing because that talks about symptom in terms of the mashpia, not wanting to be there as a mashpia. Right. Like the Talmud. But here, it's not like the Rebbe Shalom doesn't want this chokhmah to evolve. It's not like the Rebbe Shalom doesn't want to be the mashpia with the, with the R. He wants it to evolve. So the, 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 the Talmud Rebbe analogy, I find confusing to the to, to the, to the Nimshel. Because there, the symptom is a symptom, so the person shouldn't be a symptom. So, God, so the, the, the Talmud can't be a mashpia because he's being a nishpais but some himself. But God's symptom here is not related to the fact that God doesn't want to be the, the, a, a mashpia on the R. It's, it's because of that's what symptom is. You know, always with the wrong shalom. It's, it's the, it doesn't work with the nim shalom. Just for the moment, just think about one Nikoda. Just like the Talmud, yeah. we're saying he, so to speak, has to shrink up. To the point like he's not here. Like, hello? He's, where are you? I don't understand. You're such a vivacious person. Where, where did you disappear? He now shrinks into this little nakuda. Like he's almost not present. Like like we spoke about the moon on Rosh Chodesh, yeah? We learned the Mayim B'Chodesh Ashlishi. The moon on Rosh Chodesh. You were there? By when we learned about the Moilad of the Levana and Parshish Yisra. Yeah. The, where's the moon? <laughs> the moon is now, uh, the moon is now getting born. Really? You're getting born? You disappear. You can't see. Why? Because completely stay, not because he's further away, because he's closer. So he, so to speak, disappears. Yeah. And that's how he can absorb the Chachma. Let's just apply that one Nekudah without getting into the details, to the fact that the journey from the higher Chachma to the lower Chachma must go through that Sheleg, where that Chachma, so to speak, if we'll call the Chachma the student, it shrinks, it's congealed. It loses a lot of its hispashtus and expansiveness. It goes through a tremendous, tremendous restriction. Even though it's that water, it's not something else. The snow is not like, it comes from a different water. It's that water. But it's the way the water is congealed into something that's completely a different reality. Huh? Zip file, very good. Zip file. Now the snow melts back into water. 
but it's already the water that went through the process of snow. So this is the chachma in the next world, which comes from that water, it's that water, but it went through snow. And therefore it has completely different properties than the original chachma. And this continues layer, level after level after level, endless levels, until you'll have the chachma lamata, which is a chachma gashmis, relating to the physical world. The example here was biology and anatomy. But of course the same example would be studying the world of botany, the world of plants and bushes, or studying the world of mammals, or the world of birds, or the world of fish, or the oceans, or the, or the climates, or the astronomy, or the planets, or, or geology, whatever you want. Physics, science, chemistry. That's all tremendous chachma. But it, it's the noivlis chachma. That, that nekudah. The chachma itself has to go through like a freezing process so it can be shipped. The chachma must be frozen in order to be shipped down. Very good. In order to be exported, the chachma got to be frozen. You can't do an intercontinental trip and send off yogurt, and, and, and but it's going to get spoiled on the way. Or in this way, it's going to spoil every. In our march, it's going to spoil everything else. You got to freeze it, and then you ship it. <laughs> and as we're going to see why we love snow so much. The reason we love snow... Nobody says, oh, it's raining outside, great. Some people, yeah. Some people, yeah. If you're, if you're really spiritual, yeah. But snow? Unless your mama should have to drive to Manhattan right now. Uh, <laughs> or your boss doesn't give you a day off. But for kids, snow is paradise. So it's not just because school you know, gets delayed or school gets canceled. So obviously, it's a great As we'll see, we appreciate snow so much because... What snow represents is how deeper truths become congealed in a way that they're relatable. Snow represents God's language that's accessible and is communicative. It's basically uh, love that's garbed in language and terminology that's relatable to the person. And you, you feel it. You wake up in the morning and you see the world snow. It's, it's like it's a pure world. It's a white world. It's a beautiful world. It feels like a safe world, like an innocent world. You go outside. So, yeah, you could be cynical about it and say, yeah, well, everything is white. So, you know. So you could be cynical about everything. But the truth is that there's something in Shelag precisely because it represents the tzimtzum, precisely because it represents the way the chachmas freezes and you say, and it's exported, it's the way the divine language is transported in a vocabulary that is relatable to the recipient. That's also why the chachmas neituach is so beautiful. It's yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's yes. a relatable type of chachmas. Yes, it's relatable. It, it's real, it's, it's vivid, it's physical. And every snowflake itself, by the way, has a chachmas. <laughs> When they started in the 1800s to take pictures of snowflakes and they realized the unique shapes of snowflakes. So yes, uh, you know, you can get up and explain scientifically exactly why every sh- every snowflake has its shape. Uh, the, the molecules come together and the way they stick to each other, so it has to have these shapes. The fact is every snowflake has a chachma sanituach. <laughs> How it takes on a shape. Every one of them has a chachma. So it all represents this concept of the mayim, mayim is pure energy, but it's much more intense. That's why rain has a very different feeling than snow. Rain is much more raw, and snow is much more (laughs) child-friendly. That's what snow essentially is. Spiritually, that's what snow is. It's the language of spirituality, the way it relates to us. That's the essence of what shalag is, spiritually, and physically, therefore, it has the same... Impact as we will see. Okay. You can almost say that encryption today. Ah? Encryption. You want to send the sensor to the time. Take a big file, you encrypt it. Yes. Encrypted, right? Yeah. Like you said, a zip file. When you encrypt a file, that's what you're basically doing. It's too big. So you send an encryption, an encryption. But then, you gain but then you have to, uh, you have to open it. From Shell, you got to bring it back to Mayim, which is basically. You know, Un- unzip the file, unzip the file. Mm-hmm. Go and take some or as you're putting it, you're, you're freezing it to export it, and then you have to let it melt in order to make use of it. Right. Huh? Go outside and take some snow in the hand to make a snow. Yes. 
You make a snowball, yeah. The snowball, it sticks together. We should have brought in some snow for the shear for illustrations, yeah. In the Rocky Mountains, I took some snow. Yeah. And I pushed it together one full day. It didn't stick, it was so dry, it was like sand. Interesting. Wow. 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 Well, he doesn't say it's the lowest. He gives an example of Chachma in our world. So he gives an example of Chachma Sanituach. He says, Shei Chachma G'dayla. But it's called Noivlas Chachma, Shalomayla. It's Noivl, it's the residue, what comes down, what falls down from the Chachma Shalomayla. No, he wants to bring out a Chachma down here that we relate to, Chachma Gashmas. It's just an example. Astronomy is also an example. Not the lowest, no, not the lowest. Not the lowest. You didn't understand the question. <laughs> okay, I'll explain to you the question, but... We're not discussing the concepts. We're just, I'll just explain the question as is. I just want you to understand the structure of the question. There's a few stages here. The first thing, Pasha, the Mishnah. The Mishnah Masech the Nagoyim says that it's Marius Nagoyim Shnayim Sheinarba. There's basically four types of, of Nagoyim, four times of lep, four shades of white. Something called Baharis and Se'es. And each one has an accessory. It's called Sapachas. The highest level of white is Shelig. When a person develops a patch on the skin, it's Lovon Keshelig. It's as white as a white snow. Outside, you look at the white snow, real white, that's the strongest. Next is Se'es. Se'es is Tzemer Lovon. Semer lover means white wool. Yeah, it's basically a sheep is born, and the wool is perfectly white. No dirt, no filth. You wash the Rambam says you wash the wool, and it becomes it becomes bleached white. That is the second shade of white, one grade lower than the snow. Then there's what's called the accessory to Baharis, Sid Hahechel, the plaster they used for the heichel, for the chamber, for the sanctuary. And then there's the fourth level, which is uh, the whiteness of the egg. Leuven krumbetza. That's the accessory to the se'es, the accessory to the, to the fleece. Okay. So what's the highest level? What's the strongest, most intense shade of white? You say it's the most white? That's shalik snow. That's Pasha the Mishnah Masech the Negayim. Spiritually speaking, whiteness represents chesed. What does the Pasuk say? If your sins will be like scarlet red, they'll become white, they'll be bleached, they'll be whitened as snow. The highest level of whiteness, meaning the, high, the highest level of chesed, is shelek. Got it. Next stage. The Pasuk says in Daniel, there's Atik Yoimen, Yosef, he's sitting. His garment is like white snow. Levushik is like chiva. The hair on his head, meaning on his skull, is kamar nok, it's like fleece. Now what did we explain? Which is a higher level of chesed? Fleece or snow? Snow, like we see in the Negoyim, right? That white, more white, which we said is more chesed, which is more white? The snow is more white than the fleece. So when it says his garment is like white snow, and the hair of his head is like fleece, obviously the garment represents something that is whiter than the hair on the skull. This is where now we'll understand the question. Tanya says, when it says atik yoimen, atik yoimen represents that which is completely removed from yoimen. Removed from the seven midos, from the seven days of creation. That's called Atik. It's completely, completely removed. That's Atik Yom. You have the seven days. Seven days are manifested in the world of Atzillus. And then you have the Atik Yom, which as we said, it's completely removed. And then he explains. 
in Atik, you have the seven lower levels of Atik, Zayin Tachtainas, and they're manifested in what's called Arich Anpin. Arich Anpin is below Atik Yoyman. There's something called Atik Yoyman, and then under it is called Arich Anpin. Generally, it's known as Keser, the crown. Keser, on, on top of the brain. Sometimes it's called Galgalta, the skull. Just like the skull encompasses the brain, it's like the crown which encompasses the brain. That's called Arich Anpin. From the brain you have Chachma, Bina, Das, which are the three Meichen. But then you have something above it that's called Keser. That's the skull. In Keser itself there are two concepts. There's called Keser Shabbat Keser and Chachma Shabbat Keser. Keser of Keser is the Keser element of Keser. Chachma Shabbat Keser is the Chachma element in Keser. Chachma Shabbat Keser is also known as Moiche Stima, the secret brain, which is the membrane in the skull. It represents the aspect of the brain the way it's still in the skull. And then you have Keser Shabbat Keser, which is higher than Chachma Shabbat Keser. So the Balatanya says, the chesed of Atik Yoimin is manifested in the skull of Arich Anpin. The gvura of Atik Yoimin is manifested in Moiches of Arich Anpin. There's the three original components of Atik Yoimin which are completely beyond. But here we're talking about the Zayin Tachtonis of Atik Yoimin. So the chesed is manifested in the Gulgoilis, in the skull itself. And the gvura is manifested in what we call Moichestima, the secret brain. That's what the Balatanya said. Now, next step. The Zoyhar teaches us that when we say his garment is like white snow, it's talking about the Yud Gimel Tikkunei Dikna, the 13 aspects of the beard which grow on the cheeks and below the chin. That's what the Zoyhar explains. These Yud Gimel Tikkunei Dikna are rooted in Moichas of Arich Ampen, it's the extension of the skull, the way it comes down in the face, the cheeks all the way down, the temples all the way down to the chin and below the chin where the beard is. So these Yud Gimel Tikkunei Dikna are rooted in Moichas of Arich Ampen. Here now comes the question. Levushe, his garment, represents what we said? the 13 aspects of the beard, which are lower than the skull. The Yud Gimel Tikkunei Dikna are rooted in Moicha Stima of Arich Ampen. Not the skull itself of Arich Ampen, but Moicha Stima of Arich Ampen. Now we explained before, you remember, that the Chesed of Atik is manifested in the skull of Arich Ampen. That's called Keser Shebe Keser. The Gvura of Atik is manifested not in the skull itself, but in what's called Chachma Shebekeser, the Moiches So which is higher? The Levush of the Yed Gimel Tikkun Edikna, which is rooted in the Moiches of Arich Ampen, or the hair on the head, which is the skull itself, the hair is on the skull, which is the skull of Arich Ampen, which is rooted in the Chesed of Atik Yoyman, not in the Gvur of Atik Yoyman. That represents Keser of Keser, not Chachma of Keser. Obviously, the hair of the head is then much higher than the garment, which is the Yud Gimel Dikna. And furthermore, it's not just higher, it's a completely different quality. The hair on the head, on the skull, represents Chesed of Atik Yoyman. The beard represents Gvura of Atik Yoyman, which is Chachma Shebekeser, Moiches of Keser. If so, we have here an issue. Because the Pasuk tells us that the garment, which is Yid Gimel Dikna, is like white snow. And the skull, the hair on the head, is like fleece. Which one did we say was whiter, fleece or snow? Obviously snow. So this is very strange. Because the hair on the head of the skull is so much deeper and higher than the hairs of the beard. The hair on the head represents what comes out of the skull. In other words, what comes out of Keser Shebe Keser, what grows out from the skull itself. The hair on the beard is what comes from what we call Chachma Stima, which is Gvura Vatik So does it make sense then that the Levush of the Tikna is the snow and the hair on the skull is the, 
is the is the is the white wool. It's exactly the other way around. The bigger chesed, the deeper chesed of Atik Yoyman comes out in the hair of the skull. So Arisha, a, a lower level, the gvur of Atik Yoyman comes out in the lavush. So if that's the case, he should have said. Levushe is kamar noka, and sa'areshe kislag chiver. In other words, the metaphor of white snow should have applied to that which comes out of the skull, which is the chesed of Atik Yaman. Nonetheless, what does the Pasuk tell us? That the hair on the head, which comes from the skull, that's like white wool, which is lower, which is inferior to the whiteness of the snow. This is the question that Alter Rebbe is raising here, and he's going to get back to it much later in the Maimur. Again, we're not discussing the concepts, the meaning of it, and the connection to the different parts of the body. Just push it, the structure, the, 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 what we would call the mathematics of what he's saying. Push it, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle, just to give it a little Havana. Yeah, yeah. We'll see, we'll see later more Hezbe Bezer Hashem. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.